Okay, so the first thing we want to do for the procedure that we planned out is uh, we want to measure out our uh, creosol, decreasol. Um, it, it's a solid at room temp, but it has really low melting point, so I just heated it up and uh, transferred it over by pipette. So I've got creosol in a uh, 25 mil conical flask with the stir bar. And then I'm adding, um, I'm just adding a few mils of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Um, and in the, we will email you exact amounts of what we used of everything later. Uh, so we're adding the base here so our creosol is deprotonated. And then we're adding some uh, tetrabutyl ammonium bromide, and that's uh, to act as a phase transfer catalyst. Okay, so now we've got uh, deprotonated p-cresol in uh, aqueous NOH, and so we're ready to add our bromopropane. We're adding that in excess um, SN2 reaction, so increase the concentration of that will increase the rate. And now it's just a matter of refluxing this for about an hour. Um, if you already remember how to do this, you've already got it set up. Okay, so after my reflux is done, I'm just uh, taking this off, uh, turning the heat off, and Moving the reaction from heat. And then we'll just be letting that cool at room temperature. Okay, now after letting our reaction cool, I'm just going to fish out my stir bar. And we will transfer this over to a separatory funnel. And I'm going to use about five mils of ether to uh, rinse that flask. Transfer that out of the flask. And then we'll use a little bit of 5% uh, sodium hydroxide to uh, wash this. That way, any uh, one thing that does is any um, unreacted Creosol, we'd like to see that it's deprotonated so um, it'll remain aqueous and stay in the stay in the water layer. And if you'll remember, um, because the density of ether is less than the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter, um, the ether layer will be on top. And I just gave that a second to separate, and then we'll drain that off into another flask. So right now, I'm just draining the, uh, the aqueous layer off into a beaker. with the leftover ether layer I'm just going to add some distilled water and 
and we're just kind of neutralizing the pH a little bit, getting rid of some of the um, neutralizing the pH because we use the sodium hydroxide. Now I'm draining off that aqueous layer again, um, giving it a couple more seconds to uh, for the layers to separate a little better. Okay. All right, draining off aqueous. Okay, and this time with the ether layer left over, I'm going to drain into a small beaker. Okay, and after draining off the ether layer, I'm just going to add a couple more mils of ether just to, uh, just to rinse the set funnel so I don't uh, leave too much behind since we're not working with a whole lot here. So what we should have at this point in the ether layer is uh, some of our product, the propyl tolyl ether, and then you, there will be uh, some um, uh, ex of the excess bromopropane since we used an excess relative to the pre-sulfur. And now, since we could have some traces of water from the, the water wash, I'm just going to add a little bit of drying agent so I'm adding some calcium chloride until I'm not really seeing any clumping going on. Yeah, just a couple more pellets. Okay, I think that's probably sufficient here. And now I'm just going to decant, uh, getting as much of that ether over as I can without getting the um, drying agent into my, my uh, flask. Okay, and we'll call that good. We don't need it to be perfect. Um, and now we're just going to um, evaporate this down to dryness um, on the rotavap. Okay, so after the rotavap, um, because ether boils at about 35 Celsius and uh, the bromopropane that might have been um, in the ether along with your product, um, it boils at about, I believe, 71. So most of that should have come off on the rotavap. And just to be safe, we're going to uh, put this on the vacuum pump like so with this little vacuum adapter. So we just hook it up to the vacuum pump and open it up to the vacuum. And that'll help us get rid of uh, any, any uh, trace from a propane we might have. Because our product should be uh, a solid melting at about 45 or so. So, um, and we still have some liquid remaining. The vacuum pump should take care of that. So after your time on the rotavap, you've got kind of a colorless solid on the sides of the flask. Um, and that should be some fairly pure uh, propyl tolyl ether. And um, just as a reminder, you'll, you'll get an email with um, the, the amounts used of all of your uh, reagents and uh, your IR and NMR data will be on Harvey. So um, that concludes experiment 10.